Hey everyone, welcome back to Alf's Mustang Garage, bringing you another video to help keep your Mustang on the road and out of the garage. Today, we're working on this gorgeous 1965 Mustang Fastback. Very early build, uh, October of 1964 build Fastback. Honey Gold 289, four speed absolutely gorgeous car um, we've done work on this car before um, little tidbits here and there but today um, we have a rear differential howl um, it kind of it, it kind of howls a little bit uh, when accelerating but mostly when we're decelerating. So um, I'm kind of suspecting, you know, pinion bearing and or side bearings. Um, but we're gonna open it up and see what we're after. First thing I notice is this drive shaft is rubbing on this exhaust pipe. So we got a, a little wear ring right there on the drive line. So that can definitely make some noises. Maybe we can try and make some adjustments on here. And then go for a drive before we you know tear into here under this bad boy here. Okay, just got back from our test drive. We modified our exhaust bracket, slotted it, so we could pull it away from the drive shaft, which it is now. No longer rubbing. Still makes a howling noise, so I think we got an issue here on the pinion, especially where I can, uh, I can, I have, Visible play just in my pinion here. So, I think we're going to start with pulling our pinion out and taking a look at the bearings, taking a look inside before we actually pull the third member out. Uh, you can actually pull these, these pinions out, um, you know, without pulling the whole third member. So, drive shaft's coming out, and then we're going to undo these bolts here for the pinion, pull it out, put it in the vise, see if we can see what we're dealing with. Okay, I have all my bolts out of this. And so all I'm doing is I'm taking a small flathead screwdriver and just kind of working it off like this. Now you want to be mindful that there are shims on this. And you need to kind of take note if you're putting this back together just the way it is. We don't know what we're getting into so we need to kind of keep track of the shim because that's setting your pinion depth to your to your ring gear. So I got a drip pan underneath here too to catch the oil. There's gonna be some oil coming out. Okay, so I got our pinion assembly in the vise. I have you know, the same noticeable plate in this assembly, you know, from when it was installed. Um, I definitely think that's an issue there. I mean, it turns fine. I think it might just be too dang loose. Like they didn't uh, set the pin pinion crush sleeve down far enough, or maybe they used shims and didn't shim it enough. Um, 
but the bearing feels fine. I think it's a preload thing. At least I should probably do this first before I do anything else. Um, so we're going to take off this pinion nut and uh, take off the yoke and kind of see, kind of see what we're uh, what we're using. If we're using a crush sleeve or shims, if we're using a crush sleeve, we'll get a new crush sleeve for it and uh, kind of reset this preload. Throw her back in the car and see if it makes a difference. Okay, we got our impact gun. So one and one sixteenth uh, nut on there, and we're nice and secure in the vise. Well, that nut came off really easy. Looks like we are using a crush sleeve. Bearing feels good though. This is an 8 inch Ford, in case I didn't uh, mention that already. So, um, anyway, so the bearing here feels good. It inspects good. Um, I think the overall problem is just a pinion bearing preload. Uh, we're gonna put our um, we're gonna put our pinion gear back in. We're using the same bearings because they inspect okay. We got a new uh, crush sleeve on there. Feels good when turning, so so I feel good about that. It should feel nice and smooth. I'm just kind of keeping pressure like here to kind of simulate that it's you know being seated properly, and it just it just turns fine. So okay. make sure our seal is lubed up because there's nothing wrong with our seal. Being careful so not to damage that. Put our yoke back on. Like that. And I do have a new pinion nut. Put a little dab of uh, Loctite on that. It's kind of hard to do this by hand because you're trying to hold on to the pinion gear but then tighten this so uh, you're, you're definitely okay to put the impact on this thing and get it down to where you're going to start using the, the torque on it and uh, checking the preload as you tighten. Okay, so I'm just going to Hold it right here and kind of just hit it with the impact, see how she does. Okay, so if you're using the impact to, to get this thing down, uh, it's very important that you don't, uh, you know, overdo it. You just kind of get it down, you know, far enough to where you, you, can, you can actually start uh, putting the, the breaker bar on this thing and and really crushing that sleeve um, and then checking your uh, preload with your dial torque wrench. So what I'm going to do now is reposition this in the vise to actually crush this down a little bit um, and then check the pinion bearing preload. Okay so now I'm repositioned in the vise here uh, so I can actually put you know my breaker bar on it and put a good amount of torque it's usually pretty tough to crush these. 
So, um, but we're gonna slowly do this and check our preload as we kind of move forward here. Because remember, uh, you don't want to go too far because then you, you know, you crush the sleeve too far and then you're done. You gotta get a new sleeve. Okay, so according to the Ford manual, you have a pretty good range of preload on this assembly. Um, for new bearings, you're like 17 to 27 inch pounds um, of torque to, uh, of turning and rotating torque to, to get this thing to move. Um, which is a pretty good range, so you have a pretty good margin of error. Now this particular differential was assembled like not very long ago. Um, I think there was about 200 miles on these bearings and it's just uh, been howling on this guy. And so uh, we're going to kind of treat this as a new bearing because it's not really a worn, broken bearing. I mean, it's still relatively new. So if we kind of stay maybe on the on the you know lower end of that 17 to 27, I think we'll be okay. So here's the dial torque wrench that I use. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of watching my needle as I rotate this. And as you can see it's like like not even moving so I don't have hardly any preload on that it's way too loose and this is even tighter than what it was I mean there's no play in it like before when we started this it actually had play in the whole support and I've tightened it from there to take up this the play in it and I have like barely even you know two inch pounds of resistance on this so so we have a little ways to go Crush that just a little bit more. Wow, that's really, really close right there. It's You know, it's about 10 when you kind of watch the it's kind of hard to see on the film but the red needle what you're watching is my little red needle right there once once you get this thing that close uh, you're at 10 inch pounds it really doesn't take a whole lot more to get you the extra you know if you're shooting for 20 which is a really good number it really doesn't take a whole lot more of tightening to get you there. So don't, this is where you want to really be careful. It's really close. Gosh, I'm about like 15 inches right now. It's okay to do this more or not. I mean, it's, it's better than having to start all over again if you go too far, so. Well, I think that's as close as we're gonna get. Um, it's showing about 20, 22 inches and it, it, the whole overall assembly is just much tighter now and so I think uh, I think we're there we just got to put this back in the car and uh, test her out
Okay, I think it's time to go for a test drive on this uh, rear end here and see if she uh, makes any noise. Pinion's nice and tight. Um, yeah, let's go. Let's go driving this bad boy and see how she does. I dare do. <laughs> Go around the block. <laughs> 